Welcome back to the Club Innovators Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn. I am here with three Capstone executives today. They'll be joining me for the podcast. Um, Adam Shamsey, our VP of Sales. Greg Rotzel, our VP of Operations. And Sarah Diaz, our VP of Recruiting. Everyone, welcome on to the Club Innovators Podcast. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks, Kyle. I'm excited. Yeah, so it's great. It's a special episode. Normally, we have to do this always virtually, and we're doing all these different things because we work all around the country, and that's part of what makes our organization great. But once a year, we get together and we have a full company retreat, and that is going on right now in beautiful Tacoa, Georgia. We went out yesterday. We played 18 holes. Um, as a company, Sarah got in late, so unfortunately, she didn't get to uh, enjoy the golf. And uh, it, it's sad, right? Because you, you, uh, I'll, I'll do it for you. You're one of the better golfers in our company. So, <laughs> so not getting to play 18 was probably a struggle, right? I brought my golf clubs, didn't get to play. I'm so bummed. But yes, we're all very competitive around here. So I was excited to play against you guys. So I'll just hand over the prize this time. <laughs> Listen, I love it. Um, so the big thing today is we're, we're here at the retreat. Let's talk a little bit about why Capstone does the retreat. And, and why that's important for us to get together once a year. So, uh, Greg, do you want to kick us off and, and talk a little bit about the retreat and its importance? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, just thinking about it on a, a yearly basis or just regular basis, the primary contact we have with salespeople, clubs, it's basically remote, right? Uh, our salespeople are at each club and we're talking to them over the phone, we're texting, we're sending emails, we're hopping on Zooms. But as we all know, especially in the sales business, seeing people face to face, working with them in person, that is always going to be the most valuable. Yeah, Um, absolutely. We see it with our prospects, right? At each one of our clubs, we want to get prospects to the club, we want to talk to them in person. And we want to get a feel for them and, and get their body language as well. Um, for us with the retreat, uh, you know, I said this the other night when we were kind of opening things up, but I would say probably the biggest thing when it comes to the retreat is getting everybody together and for them to meet each other, but also educate each other yeah. on what they do at their club, <laughs> what they are thinking of, the, the types of innovations that they try to bring to their club clients. Um, it is a time where it's team bonding, but it's also a lot of educating and yeah. learning from one another. Um, and that's something that's much more difficult to do when you are on a Zoom call and you're just seeing people over a screen. Right? Yeah. In person, you get to sit down and talk to people one-on-one. It's huge. Yeah, yeah the, so the organic fun. conversation. Like, mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like with, between the sales, the sales team, it's, uh, in prior years when I wasn't an executive, that was very valuable to, to understand what other what other sales directors are struggling with or some successes that you just don't hear about unless you're just kind of having those conversations um, in just a, a normal, no, normal setting that you don't get. Yeah, and I think so uh, that it's also important to bring them in in a relaxed environment and it takes them away from the day to day grind, right? So they don't have to be worrying about all the tasks that they need to do and they can just relax and bond with one another. We're in a beautiful cabin next to a creek. We're sitting right now on couches uh, and everybody gets to meet one another. And that's one of the things that we promise them whenever we hire them, right? They are leaders at their club, but they are part of a larger network of membership sales directors and they can all lean on one another. So for me to see that organic interactions and the connections that are built during this retreat is is very worth it. And, And quite frankly, as a VP of recruiting, I think it's very satisfying to see the team that we've been able to build, the team that we've been able to bring on to Capstone Hospitality, and also see the different personalities and strengths that everybody has. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, all three of you make great points there. And there's all these various aspects. There's the collaboration. There's the learning aspect. There's the camaraderie and, and being able to come together and do all those things. And we know, just like Greg was saying, right? when you do a Zoom, it's from 11 to 12. Right. And then people schedule other meetings. If you're Greg, you schedule 1,000 other meetings in a day. So <laughs> even if you, you know, those, like you said, you have that main conversation, but if you have a side conversation or another couple of questions or everything, sometimes that gets pushed. Where when we're here, you know, I can sit down with any one of our salespeople and just talk marketing with them. Right. If we need to talk for an hour and a half, we can sit there and talk for an hour and a half. We need to, you know, so there's, it's more open ended. Like you guys said, I think that leads to, to better collaboration. 
And ultimately, it also leads to people being more comfortable with each other. And I think that's the big, the cool part about Capstone is that a sales director is not just by themselves, right? It's not, hey, show up and go sell. Good luck. Right. They can always talk to the executive team. They can talk to other sales directors. And part of that is when they meet each other and they're comfortable. Hey, hey, what are you doing for your member referral? Or hey, hey, what did you guys look like on your, you know, your brochure? What does it look like? And so you have this ability to compare a lot of these different things that probably a lot of sales directors out there don't get to do on an everyday basis. There are probably some, but not a lot. So that, I think that's an important piece. And then the second piece is learning, right? That we talked about. So Adam, can you talk a little more? About how we set up learning sessions, you know, you don't have to go into specifics of exactly what we're talking, or you can, um, but talk about how we set up the learning sessions and how that flows throughout the retreat. Yeah, obviously, um, you know, we want everybody to have fun, free time, things like that. But uh, one of the main objectives of these retreats is to do some more extended training. So, um, you know, this these few days we'll cover four different topics. Um, Let's see. What was the what was the first one that we covered yesterday? Um, last night. So we did a, a little bit of a lead generation yes. marketing advertising kind of Shark Tank scenario, <laughs> um, which honestly I think is our favorite yeah. as yeah. as managers and and more on the executive side to see what people can come up with, um, yeah. see how innovative they can be, and coming up with new ideas and how they're going to work through the process and execute. On those things, um, that yeah. was yeah, that that was a fun one, and and it it gives you an idea of how people are going to handle those types of situations. Yeah. yeah, and more specific to it, right? Like we tasked them with coming up with a new, interesting, outside the box lead generation idea, right. right? Like here at Capstone, we we have a whole list of lead, right? We have a book of, of hundreds of them, but this is that time to be creative again. It was like, hey, come up with an outside the box thing, and I thought our, our yeah, guys, no, they crushed it. They killed it. Yeah, it was awesome. Extremely with some of the ideas and, and just the, the thought behind it um, that was put in was, uh, yeah, pretty eye opening. I was I was really impressed with some of the ideas that they came up. With yeah. There. And go ahead. I'm oh sorry. no, I'm sorry. I was gonna sorry. I was gonna cut in here. Yeah. And if you're listening right now and, and you're not a part of Capstone, and you're curious in those lead generation ideas. You can reach out to me. You can do that at Kyle at CapstoneHospitality dot com. And uh, we'd be happy to talk some marketing and Legion with you anytime. So if you are interested in that and you're listening to our podcast, feel free to reach out. We'll help out with that. So. Yeah. And then our second training uh, yesterday was uh, presented by, by you, Mr. Forever. Uh Marketing uh, the Capstone way, I guess. Um, kind of what sets us apart versus you know your, your run-of-the-mill marketing uh, firms that maybe don't specialize in what, what we do. Um, where we kind of bring in an, an expert approach to the membership sales from the marketing standpoint. So I thought that was uh, was good for the team to kind of hear, hear how you, you do it. So. Yeah. And like everything else, they don't get to interact with me every day. So right. seeing me in person, talking to me, and really after we had that talk um, last night, again, to try to describe to you, we're in this giant cabin. Like Sarah said, you know, there's a kind of like a game room downstairs. And so everyone was kind of hanging out playing pool. And I had maybe 10 different sales membership people come up and start talking to me about the marketing thing. And again, that goes back to the collaboration. It was great because they may not have always wanted to talk about it in the middle of the room in front of 30 other people. But we, I had a lot of great conversations last night. And it doesn't lead to that if we don't have the session. Right. right. And so that was the end of last night. We carried over to this morning. We did a little bit of training, correct? Yeah, we, uh, we did a 90-minute session. Uh, all around HubSpot, um, our CRM system that we utilize here at Capstone. Um, you know, during the, the training process for these new sales directors, it's kind of a two week crash course. You know, everybody knows you got to do training for two straight weeks. There's some things you're going to pick up, there's a lot of stuff that, that you're going to forget. So yeah. it was a good little refresher. Um, and I feel like there was, there was a lot of good stuff that came out of it just now. So. Yes, the way that training is set up because there's a lot of people that ask about training and then about ongoing training whenever they join Capstone. We do have those two weeks set up. It's the beginning of your career at Capstone Hospitality. And then a lot of people say, well, what happens next, Sarah? What are my ongoing training opportunities? And I think one of the strengths that we have at Capstone Hospitality is that we're still small enough and our communication is very, I don't want to say relaxed, but it's very approachable. 
And so you're able to text us, you're able to call us, you're able to get to know one another. And then therefore, it's really easy to reach out. So yes, we have the training, we have the retreat that tend to be more formal trainings. But what we are trying to communicate to our sales directors is that you can literally just call us, pick up the phone and ask questions. So what I tell people, new hires especially, or people who are interested in working in Capstone Hospitality, is that you're literally learning all the time. All the time, right? Through our Zoom meetings, through calling one another, we're leaning on uh, on the rest of the team. So I think the ongoing training is on you because as a sales director, you're constantly trying to polish your skills, but then you do have a team that backs you up all the time. Yeah, and I'm just going to drop this little tidbit in, uh, you know, because it's my favorite thing to do. You know, if you're interested in our training process, we also offer that around the country. Um, if you're a club that's, again, outside the Capstone Network, uh, we do have what we call Drive, which is our Basically, we share our CRM with you. We get you all hooked up with it, which helps your organization from a sales point of view. And then we have basically a master's class on sales techniques uh, that range all the way from like literally your first call through closing and all that. So if you are listening again, you're interested in our sales process and how we do things, uh, you can reach out to Ben Getman at Ben at Capstone. We got really easy emails. Just Ben at Capstone-Hospitality.com to learn more about Drive. And Kyle, just to one more thing about our training and that I think is different than the rest of the companies is yeah. that we're going to give you pretty honest feedback about your communication, about your style, yeah. about how you're approaching people. It's not just reading and going through modules. We are going to see you in person and we want to hear you pitch and how you do phone calls. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Don't they, they book tours while they're training and things of that nature, oh, correct, yeah. guys? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they're doing call blocks. We're evaluating those phone calls. And they're shadowing people they're, as well. They're shadowing uh, membership directors at clubs, at their club. Um, and many times they're golfing as well. So we're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, little, little bit of fun mix in there for little, sure. A little bit yeah. of everything. But yeah, we have within our, our training program we have measures set up. We have sales measures. We have activity measures. And, and those measures they have to hit when they're in training to say, all right, you've gone through this. You've completed it. You have succeeded within our training program. And that's when we feel comfortable fully placing them at a club, right? Um, so it's, it's good to get a feel for each new employee, each new salesperson coming in. But the key is constructively getting them what they need to succeed. Um, and we have, we've been doing this for years. We know what type of experience they need. We know they need to get hands-on call experience as soon as possible, because th that might be one of the most important things. We know they need to shadow a little bit and get a feel for the, the club day-to-day -day and the operations, especially if they don't have that experience yeah. uh, already. Um, so those types of things, it, it's, it's definitely personalized um, to them, but it, it gets them what they need. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to set them up for success, right? If they're successful, the club's successful, Capstone successful, our clients are happy, we're happy, they're happy. It's just a, a happy marriage, right? So um, we want to make sure that you know we're just setting them up correctly to be as impactful and successful as possible. Yeah, I think that was a great point. You know, we kind of went through and Greg talks about like these benchmarks they have to hit. And not that it was intimidating when I heard it, Greg, but if you are listening, you're interested in Capstone, right? Like we set you up for success. And the reason why we have those benchmarks is because you're not ready to go into club till you hit them. So that's us. You know, it's not like, oh, you didn't hit a benchmark, you're out of here. It's right. It's we need to work more towards that benchmark because we're not going to put you in a club where you're not going to be successful if you're not ready for it yet. And that's what I like about it. We've had people that have been in training for two weeks. We've had people that have been in training for a couple months. And it's crazy across the board. Sometimes the people that are in training for two or three months end up being great, great salespeople for us. So there's no like one size fits all. And by the way, there have been people that have been in for two weeks. So it's, it's really all across the board. Sarah, I get this question all the time, right? You just talked about golf, right? People, oh, you guys golf all day. You do this. Like, yes, we do get to golf, but there's a particular way we get to golf when we're golfing a lot. And Adam, you could probably speak to this as well because you've been at a club. You know, can you talk a little bit about how they get to play golf at the company, but it's really within work, right? Yes, correct. We don't want to uh, make the mistake of saying that they're going to be playing golf every day, all day. Correct. 
we do hire golfers and that's how the company started through golfers, right? Our CEO, he played in the mini tours. We also had a couple of other people play professionally and they just knew the game and it is a great way to get to know people. And it's our product as well, right? So if you know golf, you're able to talk golf, the job is going to be easier for you because I do get that question a lot. Am I required to play golf? Do I have to know golf? And the thing is, Yes, if you're selling golf, a golf club, a membership, then you do need to know. But how they play golf is taking the prospects out. There is a purpose to playing golf, and that is for the prospects to check out the golf course that they want to be a part of, right? So if you are a golfer and you're able to keep the pace of play, you know the etiquette, you're able to talk golf, it's just going to be a better experience for the prospect, right? So Absolutely. If they want to check out the golf course, nine holes, 18 holes, and you have the time by all means. But we also like to stress to the sales directors that obviously they need to meet, you know, the goal every month, right? And they have work to do and they need to build more than one relationship. So you have to be able to manage your time. Uh, but certainly we want, you know, all the best golfers. And also if you're not a great golfer as well, but you love the game and you understand it and you want to be a part of it, then absolutely come talk to us. Yeah. yeah. I, I think those that uh, go to the playing board side of things, it's the most important. Problems. Yes, they're standing golf, but you're also, you got, you know, playing nine, you got probably two hours or play multiple, four hours solely dedicated to that prospect where you can, you can really build a rapport, a relationship with that prospect. Um, and provide a great experience for them, right? And and ultimately lead to sales. Uh, that that's that's what the, what that's designed to do. So uh, I've done hundreds of playing tours Man. over the last <laughs> five years. Um, my club's a little more uh, specific, where you know our prospects have to play with the membership director, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's ultimately, I would say probably somewhere, I mean, I don't know the true data on this, but I, I would have to guess 75% of sales come from like, course. so it's uh, extremely important. Yeah. So it's one of those, like, of course you get to play golf, yeah. but you're playing golf in a work environment, right? right? Correct. The golf yes. isn't for you to go out there and work on your game, right? The right. golf is for you to get out, go out there, understand the prospect, what they're looking for in a club, and then hopefully close that prospect, right? And so I always like to explain that to people. It's like, yes, we, we do get to golf, and, and some of us do get to golf a good amount. You know, it, I guess it depends on who you're comparing. I don't, I don't golf at all, but um, you know, we have a lot of people in our company that do get to golf a couple of times a week, and it's you know, it's through that playing tour process and all that. Um, but they really enjoy, and that's why. And I always like to kind of clarify that because I know that's a big question with you, Sarah. And you know, even people when they first start, they they always kind of they ask that question again, right? Or yes. you know, they'll meet me in the office, like, yeah. So uh, how much golf do you play? And I'm like, you're talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> like, I I drone and I take pictures on golf courses when I'm out there. I don't swing the club, um, and that's a favor to everybody. I probably yeah, yeah I probably hurt I somebody. Didn't, I didn't say it. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't. I don't really want to see you out there. No, no, I, that's for protection for people on different fairways because that's where I'm going. So that's always a big piece. It would be a little tough. Um, so, you know, go back to it. Obviously, we're at the retreat. We're talking about camaraderie, all this stuff. Um, let's talk a little bit just about how we do the retreat because it's kind of fun, right? We're out here in uh, kind of the middle of nowhere, right? Blue Ridge it's, Mountains. Yeah, it's Tacoa, yeah. Georgia. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not Tacoa. It's okay. Well, it's blue. So, if you're listening, I'm it's, I'm the dummy on this. So it's okay. Um, okay, so we're in Blue Ridge, yeah. right? So. It's it's an interesting aspect in going through because we have a lot of people here, so cooking is always an adventure. It's, it's called team bonding. It is. It <laughs> it is right? It's great. You know, you just need you need time, right? Yeah. You need time with one another, whether it's being productive in sessions or whether it's just simply relaxing and talking about, you know, uh, personal situations. Greg just got engaged. Congratulations. Yeah, so, Greg. you know, we, we get to know each other uh, on uh, more than in a professional level, on a personal level. And I think that just helps with work because people are more comfortable asking questions, yeah. asking for help. And yes, I actually really like the concept that um, I'll say they've built because I wasn't here when we first started the retreats. But yes, and it is in a secluded area, Blue Ridge Mountains. 
nobody really goes out to restaurants or at night or anything like that. You know, girls and boys are separated. I do have to say that as a woman, you know, it's perfectly safe. Um, and then, yes, we have te- a team that cooks, a team that cleans up, a team that will cook lunch and dinner, and we alternate. And so those are activities set up so that one, we, we get to work with one another, and then also, you know, just provide a, a nice relaxing time as well. Yeah. And then we have uh, Mr. Shamsi over here, who is our coffee person, right? He uh, <laughs> he will brew 13 cups of coffee a day, including at 10 at night. So, yes. We get to know each other's preferences. As, as, yeah. Right. As we were talking and playing a little bit of cards and winding down last night, I, I see him pour a cup of coffee at 10 p.m. and astonished me. But <laughs> I want with my wife. <laughs> well, hopefully perfect. she won't be listening. We'll, we'll uh, cut that one. Yeah, so, <laughs> Sarah, obviously, a bit right. You recruited and hired a lot of these people, right? Yes, so, most of them. I was looking around, and um, there's only a few people that I didn't recruit. Um, so, most of them I have hired, and oh, yes, yeah, you gentlemen. Most of them, I, I didn't hire you. Yeah, they're looking at me like I'm crazy, but most of them I have. Yeah, we, yeah no, I would. We've say. been around the block. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, we have. So yes. how important is it for you to come here and talk to them now that, you know, some of them you just hired, but some of them have been here for a year or two years. How important is it for you to now come and follow up conversations with them and chat with them about that and learn more about, like, you know, how to recruit on your own? I think it's very important. You know, when I hire people, I am looking for certain qualifications and characteristics. And, you know, most importantly, that they bring value to Capstone. So I do like to follow up with them to see how they're doing. And, and most important for me, Kyle, is see the, their success, right? Over, over time. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like I build a good relationship with them while we interview and I get to know a little bit about them and their goals and what they're wanting out of Capstone as well. So it's great to see them in person and and just listen to them, you know, about the different opportunities that they've had or the different challenges that they're facing or, or how smooth it's going and 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 also the wins, right, that they've been able to have. So there's a couple of people that I hadn't met in person. And so this is a I was really excited to come because it's a great opportunity for me to see them in person. And just like Greg said earlier, just like our sales process, the in-person interaction is truly invaluable. Yeah, I mean, it's... yeah, we're four people right here who never get to really interact in person quite a bit. We live in four different states. Yeah. So that just goes yeah. to show you the, the reach of Capstone, if you will. So. Yeah, I would love to, love to see you guys on a weekly basis in person, but it's, yeah. uh, it's just not the way that we're kind of structured. Um, but to kind of point out what Sarah was saying, the experience for you to kind of get that feedback on you know, what their experience is probably helps you in what you do every day. And you probably are never going to really get that unless you have this once a year where we're all under one roof and you can have that one on one. Yes, I, you know, interaction. I, I just think the way that we're able to bring value to our clubs is through the people, right? So at the end of the day, just like every company, the people are our biggest assets. And so, you know, we have to make sure they're a good fit for the club, but then also a good fit for Capstone overall. So culture does play into the hiring decision. Of course, it's the qualifications, everything that is on the resume, the skills that they're able to, to build. But what we're looking for too is a certain mentality because over training, we're going to be able to add on to those skills or polish those. So, um, you know, we we bring people from all kinds of backgrounds, people w- who have had a lot of sales experience, maybe some that are just getting started. And that's only because of the different opportunities that our clubs are able to, to give us. Yeah. And I, like speaking on the management side of things, right? We, we talk to the salespeople every single day. Uh, but again, it's through Zoom, it's over the phone, it's through text. And being able to sit down with them and yeah, just learn more about them as, as people, as humans. That is probably the most invaluable thing uh, that, that we can do. Um, a- another thing, just thinking about it, you know, Adam and I have been working with some of our senior sales directors that are being promoted to regional sales directors. And, you know, we just promoted three new regional sales directors a, a couple weeks ago. And they're able to come here to the retreat and sit down with the specific salespeople that they are working with, getting to know them better, working one-on-one, building that rapport, getting plans together, just moving things forward, but just learning about each other back and forth. 
right? Um, it, I mean, I could talk about that for days, but it's just it's so incredibly important. And uh, again, we are you know we are a in the sales business and club industry, we are a people based industry. We're talking to people all the time. We're talking to clients all the time. Talking to prospects all the time. Sales people, managers, everybody, and the more you can create that that really solid rapport with as many people as possible, the more successful everyone is going to be. More successful clubs are going to be. More successful we as a company, the sales people. Um, you know, I wish we could do this every single quarter yeah, or right. every month, right? But. It may be uh, one day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it may be one day, but uh, just just this as a base is it's huge. And, it's, you know, we take uh, everything that we see and every conversation that we have, and I look back at the end of the retreat and kind of just go back, you know, this was a great conversation. This was a great conversation. This is going to come out of this conversation. We're going to push this forward. Um, and it's... And the numbers yeah. prove it. I mean, we've yeah. seen that after the retreat, sales increase, people are more motivated. People have a clear goal of what they're needing to do. And they also educate one another. So they come back to work with notes and ready to, to execute new lead generation ideas, for example. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing is maybe some of the newer employees that, you know, typically like Greg or myself will meet them uh, at the club. Uh, for onboarding at the club, but um, but just kind of a reminder of like there there is a support system behind that, right? You know, you've got the got Gray, um, you have Kyle on the marketing side, and then you have your regional director as well. Um, you know, not even to, to kind of throw you know Brian Friedrichs and uh, Timonello into the mix, but there is this this whole support system behind that. So there, you know, yes, you are at a club by yourself, but you're not by yourself, right? There's this entire team behind you to help you uh, with whatever you're facing. Um, one of us has seen and, and done whatever you're, you're going through, right? Oh, yeah. So, yep. you know, you're going to get, as a new sales director coming into this company, there, you're going to get a lot of stuff thrown at you that you've never experienced, but just know that there's what, I don't know, the total experience, but it's got to be a part of you know, thousand years. Yeah, I was gonna say Jim alone is probably like forty <laughs> no, years. He's ninety percent of that one thousand years. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, there's a ton of experience standing under this roof right now. So um, there's somebody in this company that has probably seen or done. So uh, lean on that. And and I think about it. I mean, our experience with clubs, we see so many clubs where there is just one individual membership director at that club, and they don't work with anyone else. Right. They don't have a team beside them, behind them, building them up, working with them on lead generation, on sales tactics. It's just that, you know, and maybe they work with a general manager, maybe they work with an owner to get approvals and, and push things forward a little bit. But we see that as a, a real success for us and a way for us to make a difference at each one of these clubs. Because clients, owners, and GMs, they, they can come to us. We can say, oh, yeah, we saw this at this club two years ago. Let's right. talk about what that process should look like, what we need to do, how you need to get the word out there, whatever it is. right? And I think that's one of the things we see as a hindrance at a lot of clubs that that's, that's us. That, right. That's what we're there for. And we've yeah, only been able to, to build on that with right. marketing and advertising drone work and everything that we do it just keeps getting better yeah a lot of these other non capstone clubs you know they may have a membership director there that they've never actually done you know membership sales prior to them joining that club and the gm may have come from food and beverage or the golf side so they don't really have that sales background to kind of structure that out and i think that's to kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier from the drive uh offering that we have that's where I feel like, you know, if you're if you're sitting there, your membership director out there, um, you know, contact Ben about Drive. Uh, we'll get you get you all set up with our CRM system, which a lot of a lot of clubs today aren't using, which is kind of crazy to me. But it's wild. Um, and then just some some more training on on, on the sales side. 
Yeah. You, you get access to us too. I mean, that's the other yeah. thing I know, you know, Greg, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you, you have some conversations with people that are drive clients pretty often. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something where, you know, piggybacking on everything we said, we talk to a lot of these membership directors at these clubs, some of the drive clients. And as Adam was saying, they have never done membership sales before. Maybe they've never worked at a club before. Yeah. And they start and they have no training. It's just, all right, go do it. And I mean, I, if I had that, I mean, I had our, our training system wasn't exactly as robust as it is now when I yeah. first started. Yeah. Um, but if I didn't have any training whatsoever, I, w- I would have been stuck in the mud. I, I mean, and I think I that leads to, to another thing. We, we had a whole podcast episode with this early on is burnout, right? If it's just you at a club and yeah, maybe you have a GM that you have conversations with, but you don't have that support system, it's easy to burn out sales. I mean, that, you know, I don't know every profession, but I feel like salespeople burn out quickly. And so I think the ability to call people and have that team. You know, because you're going to have you know weeks or months when you're just struggling with things, and right. you have somebody that you can directly call that cares, right? It's not like oh, I'm going to call my buddy and he's going to be like, "Hey, man, that's great. I'm sorry you're having a tough time at work." It's like, no, I can call Adam and Greg. And be like, hey, right. I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. Like, can you just walk me through this? Like, I'm I'm burned out. You know, this and that. Like, how do I get through this? And you right. guys have real experience because you've been there. You know, you guys have been in their seat. You know, I would say everyone and. Not an insult. Everyone here but me and Sarah have been membership directors, really, in the entire Well, company. I did sell memberships. Well, I yeah. did. Oh, that's right. I, 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 put, I, 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 a little more I take that back. It's just me. To prove myself. I, but, I but, did forget the Biltmore skin. So <laughs> I, uh, I take that back. I'm the only person with yeah. a member, which, which she makes my point even more. Everybody in this house, except for me, has done sales experience in, in our company. So you can go to so many different people as resources. So that's, I think that's pretty awesome. But also with that, talking about burnout, that's why these are so important. Absolutely. This is like yeah. a, you know, three, four day, just, you know, kind of, you know, wipe the slate clean and it's, it's a refresh. Re, re-energized, you yeah. know, refocused and, you know, and we'll do it all over again in yeah. 365 more days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, work, work your butt off for the next yeah, year and yeah. then we'll be back. Yeah. And it, I always look forward to the retreats when I was directly selling and you know, I, I've definitely felt burnout and I always felt like whenever I got the retreat, you know, I was just like Take I'm a breath. Back. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm back in it. Like I get back to my club and I just start cramping again. So um, but yeah. I that's I think that's a huge piece. You yeah, know, I hear so. burnout all the time. There's people that write articles on it. Yeah. Uh, we did a podcast episode on it. So of course before I wrote I wrote a blog post on it. I went and did a bunch of research on burnout. And it was amazing how it talked about the percentages. And it was like you get to like salesperson and like that graph just spiked way up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean it's I mean make no mistake about it. We we grind, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is a it's a full time job, right? Yes. You know? Um not to say you can't take days off. You for sure should take days off and take time away and uh, with your family or whatever, but uh, you know, there's there's, you know, our schedules can get a little hectic sometimes depending on the business volume, things like that. And you've yeah. got, you know, in season and off season and things like that. So you got highs and lows. But when you're when you're in season and you're full force and um, you know, you want to capitalize on that. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah. I mean if you think about it, the, the busier we are as salespeople, the, the better, more right? the more sales we're making, most likely. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a uh a, a, a give and take, yeah. uh for sure. I mean Back in the day when I was a salesperson, I probably got burned out two or three times a year. Um, <laughs> but I was I was working my butt off over and over and over again. Um, that, I mean, that's what. Uh, granted, I, I've gotten a lot better at, at dealing with that. I was younger and didn't have as much life experience. Um, but you know, we we want that out of our sales people. We want them to come in and hungry, yeah. and work hard. But we also want to work with them to say, hey. Take it down a notch. You're fine. You're doing great, right? Yeah. So it's it's a give and take. Right? No, I think that's. I, I go back to it. The coolest part of our company is the support, right? The, yeah. Being able to reach out to anyone. Again, you know, I don't know how it is in every company, but you're literally calling our cell phone. We'll pick up. I mean, it is what it is. I know. I, look, I've seen Greg and heard Greg picking up his phone probably later at night than he should. Now that he's engaged, that may change. 
Um, <laughs> no, I'm taking the late night phone calls, but we're we're open to talking to you know all the people in our company when they call us when they want to talk. You know, yeah. there I have marketing clients, I have sales reps who just club aren't marketing clients, but when they call me and they need help with design or this or that, like, I'm going to help. We're going to carve out time. And I think the great piece about us is like we're a team. It's not an individual thing. So like our salespeople's success is our success and vice versa. And all of that becomes the club success that we're in, correct? Because if we're making sales and we're doing our job, it's, you know, what is it? The the tide lifts all boats or something like that. So did I get that right? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Somewhere along wow. that. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah, I'm trying. So you've been working with a lot of yacht clubs recently. <laughs> yes, I have actually. We we do work with yacht clubs, like Greg was saying. So again, it's not just golf clubs, right? It's right. yacht clubs. Yeah. It's all kinds of things. So anything that's a membership, we've worked with. So it's yeah. a cool yeah. aspect. Like so, sure. Well, gr- guys, I appreciate you joining me today. It's been fantastic talking to you. I'll let you guys get out of here and go enjoy the rest of your 2024 retreat. That way, you don't spend too much time here and get burnt out, right, Adam? Appreciate that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, um, Kyle. Me and Talaka. Absolutely. <laughs> so for Adam, Greg, Sarah, and Kyle signing off, we'll see you next time on the Club Innovators Podcast.